from Vancouver. And Madeline, yeah, I saw your uh, Madeline's going to do nothing at all. No, you're I'm going to take you to a chocolate shop that you're going to die. What are you doing in Vancouver? Yeah. Sorry, what was that? I'm going to take Mads to a chocolate shop that you are going to die for. Oh man, I can't wait. Where are your favorite places to go in Vancouver when you have time? My outside? apartment. That's it? <laughs> yeah. I love my apartment, you guys. I have created a sanctuary. I'm very much a homebody. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that already. I just like to chill at home. I take a lot of baths. I work out. I eat at home. I like to cook. Come on, you're a vegan. Where did the vegans eat in this town? You know, heirloom? Have you guys been to heirloom? Heirloom's great. Where's Other heirloom? I'm heirloom. Heirloom is corner of 12th and Granville. Boom. It's pretty good. <laughs> Still like my home better, but you know. What are some other uh, vegan restaurants that we could check out? Do you get to visit a lot of those around here? Nope. No. <laughs> nope. I work here. That's about it. And then you go back. And then I go back, yeah. You were saying uh, just backstage there about your workout routine that you uh, work at your personal gym and uh, you were making a video about it on YouTube. Um, how do you connect with your trainer? Because your trainer's in LA. Oh, I, I FaceTime with my trainer in LA when I'm here. You gotta stay in shape when you're on a show like this. I gotta be active, so he's really good. What's your root workout routine like? Like, how often do you. You want me to do it? Yes. <laughs> just kidding. I'm Can you, like, you give yes. it a tip? <laughs> <Yes>. No. <laughs> So it's 90 minutes, that would be way... Oh, can you imagine I sit back. here for 90 minutes and just do a workout routine? That would be... Who wants to watch Madeline work out for 45 minutes? No! no. <laughs> Some people do! <laughs> no, but actually, no. If you're that committed, in which you are, how often... Uh, sorry, what are some of the fundamentals for your exercise? Uh, Cardio and uh, isolating those muscles. I don't know. I have a trainer. Like, why ask me the questions? I don't know. My trainer does all that. I don't know. So you just like you don't even remember? No. Trainer that's the whole point of having a trainer is you can just space out and you can just work on your your whole fitness routine and right. like, forget it all when you walk out. As a vegan, like I was sleeping. As a vegan, how do you uh, nourish yourself for that? Because if, like I think that there's a, uh, perhaps a misconception that if you're vegan and you work out, because you ladies aren't vegan, right? No. I know Marisol, you work a lot, and you got some biceps, Natalie. So how do you? That's just from beating. She's lame. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh my God! That's my workout. <laughs> no, no, I eat very, very. You noticed there were no chuckles in the audience on that one. They were like, "This is so uncomfortable." Yeah, yeah, they, they think that, that I'm being serious, which I kind of am. But you know, we'll get to that. Um, you know, I think going back to your misconception, absolutely, vegans and vegetarians—they get protein in their bodies just like everyone else. I mean, yeah, you ain't. You know, you ain't muscle free yourself. Yeah, I got some muscles. Yeah. This can't possibly be entertaining for you guys. What do you guys <laughs> want to talk about? Like, what do you want to know? I think they have questions. I think they're like. Does it go right there with a question? Okay, I have a question for Madeline. Um, what separates you from Cheryl? A lot of things. Um, first of all, I'm not mean, which is a big one. Uh, but the thing, the only thing that I find brings me together with Cheryl is that. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this. There was a point in my life where I felt very lonely and like I didn't have a support system, which isn't true, but I felt that and I felt the darkness that Cheryl felt at a certain time and I think that's what connects me to her. Other than that, there's not a lot that brings us together. There's not a lot of similarities. Everything else is different, basically, other than the way we look, obviously. Right over here. No filming. Um, to all of you guys, uh, what were your favorite scenes to film? Like, out of all of Riverdale. Um, <laughs> but I think that was... What? Just... <laughs> what? Um, it's such a beautiful scene. And I remember shooting it was so raw and emotional with Vanessa. Um, that will always be my favorite scene I've shot, I think, on the show. Aww. Yeah. See, I just like getting covered in maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do kind of torture each other a lot on the show, don't we? Yeah, don't say you didn't love that, too. You get covered in maple syrup, I get covered in blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah it totally balances out. The and I, I'm, sure, I'm sure I heard them call cut quite a few times, and then they just carried on with the maple syrup, um, suffocating. They're like, you asked yeah, we for it, and she's like, no, no, we don't. She didn't even want to break. She didn't even want to break. <laughs> How hard is it to wash maple syrup out? That's what was my question. I am keeping the fifth on that one. <laughs> you what? Sorry, what? Just like cleaning the keeping fifth. the fifth. Okay. Some secret maple sauce yeah. cleaner, yeah. maple syrup sauce cleaner that we don't know about. Well, what about you, Marisol? What was your uh, favorite? Um, I, I, it's hard because I never had maple syrup or did any crazy awesome things, but um, I, I miss season one Hermione with Veronica. There was a really great scene where. Veronica finds out that I'm cheating on Hiram while he's in prison with Luke. And it's this really like hard, touching moment between 
her mom and her daughter trying to break it to her like I'm still she's still a human being and she still has needs and Fred was the love of her life and really awkward but we had some really touching mom daughter scenes that I loved from the first season before I was a bad person so I miss those do you know what's my favorite scene of yours this is so weird in the pilot yeah. When Veronica comes home from the dance and she lays her head on your on your legs and you guys talk and you're drinking wine and you rub her head, yeah. it's such a normal mom moment. I feel like that. I okay, loved. from that moment, if you remember, I was wearing the robe. Oh yeah. And my leg was showing. I remember the leg girl. All of a sudden, the network freaked out and said we can't have Hermione. And apparently, it was like too sexy of a scene or something. Hell yeah. So girl. since okay. then, they're like she has to sleep. She has to zip. Like it's crazy. That just means you got a good body. It was like it's just a mom. Welcome to a conversation with us, by the way. Sorry, hi. I think we shall have a mother-daughter moment like that where you put your head on my lap. Absolutely. Throw your head. Nope. Not I especially like with, that, uh, with that career you're going down. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Let's go to this side right over here. Yes. Hi. Hi, I'm really short. I'm sorry. We're well, all really short. Welcome to our world. What's your name? Here, right? Kaylee. Kaylee? Kaylee? Yes. Hi, Kaylee. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you guys have any advice for actors trying to get into the business. I do. Yeah, um, uh, my advice is, uh, if you want to be an actor, it's, it's one of those things, if you want to be a writer, you write. If you want to be an actor, you act. So it's, you get into every single solitary thing that you can get into. So school play, um, any play that's auditioning. I know Vancouver has pretty amazing theater here. Student films, anything. And the more you do your craft, the more doors start to open up. Um, very often people are like, oh, I want to be an actor, so I got headshots. Well, you, you have to actually have a product first. And then the headshots and everything else comes later. So I just say get your hands on every single thing that you can do and do your craft as often as possible. That's mine. Yeah, I, I agree, agree with that. Yeah, 100%. And I think also a thing to know is that it's never a smooth upward trajectory. It's always like this. And so when the down times come, you just got to be patient and hang in there. Keep loving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Another interesting thing too is that I admire that you do is that you make the time to work on your YouTube channel so that you're in control of that part of your career too. It's not even really about the control, but I appreciate that. It's more for the connection with all of you guys. Like I feel like, you know, Cheryl, especially the first season, there was a misconception that I was too similar to her, if you know what I mean. People thought I was mean. And so I first just started the YouTube channel so people could get to know Madeline separately from Cheryl. And then it ended up, you know, half people who come up to me at the table today have told me how much they love it. And so that's why I keep doing it more than anything. But also further to that, uh, I think that that's a great way to have the product. If someone's not going to cast you, like I think Natalie does that great. She makes her own work. But that's how you guys can do that, is make your own work and look at them for what they're doing. Yeah, I think uh, it's very unhealthy to wait for someone to give you permission to do what you want to do. You know, so you can't be sitting around going, oh, if only somebody would give me a break. Because um, it's also like an energetic static that happens then. You become stagnant. So if you keep pushing forward with whatever it is you want to do, I love doing com uh, comedy improv. I go to a comedy improv class. Oh my God. If You've taken one? Where do you every go time time I want to Every Tuesday, a wonderful woman called Ali Froggett um, at Instant Studios does improv comedy. And it, it, is, it just keeps your energy up. We laugh our heads off. There's a bunch of uh, actors from the age of 16 to 76. And we, we play. Yeah. And it keeps your energy going, and I can tell you that work has come from that. My comedy work actually started flowing after that class. Yeah, it's an energy thing. I'm a hippie, as you can tell. Right over here on this side. Uh, what's been your favorite blooper that you've been a part of? Favorite blooper that you've been a part of? I don't really make mistakes. Oh. <laughs> I'll attest to that. <laughs> No, but really, I don't have any bloopers. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just not funny. No one played a joke on you? No. Really? People, yeah, no. Oh. But my favorite blooper that I've seen... Note to self. ...is the one where Luke had a snake in his jacket and he... She scared you with it. That was like well, one of the let's best just say, of the season. I had been shooting all day with a live rattlesnake. <laughs> Remember the first season? That rattlesnake in the box was alive. So I had a snake wrangler. There's such a that's a title, by the way, of a job, a snake wrangler. And this guy comes on set, and he's the one that's supposed to protect me from the snake, and he has he's missing a leg, <laughs> which is not making me feel confident at all. The snake wrangler, the snake was, wrangler was missing a leg, and he's walking in, and he's got this giant rattlesnake, 
So I had been shooting all day with this rattlesnake. And then finally it's like the end of the day and I have a nice quiet scene with Luke and we're sitting in Pops and he throws a rubber fucking snake <laughs> at my face and I freaked out. But that was one. Oh, yeah, that was good. That's, it was a good one. It's a good video. Wait, can we, is that, can we see that anywhere? Yeah, it's on the blooper reel for the first season. Sweet, oh, yeah. we're gonna have a look for that. <laughs> Natalie? Uh, no, I mean, I can't talk that at all. <laughs> yeah, I tried to. I tried that the hard candy Christmas scene that we did together. We were, I was trying to get Madeleine to throw um, the, what do you call them, the little candy, candy. candy canes at me. And I was trying to, you know, get them to cut it so I had one at my nose and one in my ear, but they didn't do it for the Did they even keep me throwing it at you? I don't think so. Yeah, I think they would. Did they cut that out? Yeah, they're like just just say say yes to Natalie so she doesn't start smashing glass. Peter, who are here on this side? Hey, I was just wondering if we might see Cheryl back with the serpents eventually. Your guess is as good as mine. Fair enough. Sorry. <laughs> they don't tell us stuff. How often do you guys like open the script? And I feel like this is, may happen a lot. You open the script and you're like, what? Every, Every single the time. Whole script. <laughs> Every single script. You would not believe what my character gets into in the next couple of episodes. Yeah, did a... <laughs> yeah. I did mean, it. It changes, right? We think we're going one way and, uh, and then we just do that. And I think it's got a lot to do with how interactive the show is with our fans, right? People guess something, they suggest something, and, uh, and I think it really affects where the storyline has gone in the past. I don't actually think that's the case at all. I don't think it has anything to do with... You have to agree with me. I've just said it to all these people. <laughs> I have, I have a question for Madeline. Oh man, okay. Okay, so when you opened up the script and you found out you had this archery, because I love that thing about your character, yeah. um, uh, did you start training for the archery thing? Did you know archery before? Because you own that bow and arrow like nobody's business. <laughs> so actually, during the pilot, you might remember this, Roberto, our showrunner, sat down with us after we shot the pilot and said, what are some things that you liked? What are some things you didn't like? What do you want to see your character do, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And I said, and he's like, what's something that you've always wanted to do? And I was like, well, archery, but I've never had a reason to. And he was like, done. And then first season, we didn't do anything with it, and I thought he forgot. And then second season, he wrote it, and I just set up classes for so, me. It was yeah, so he's amazing. I don't like know how he, he remembered it. Just pop in, 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 in the pilot, we also decided, like, I had talked to him about her sexuality, and we got down this all road, and then we didn't hear anything about it season one, and he remembered every single thing we spoke about. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he actually sleeps. No, definitely not. Like, yeah. How did that evolve for the three of you? Because when the show started, uh, you weren't at the forefront. It was kind of about what the classic Archie characters were from the comic books. But as the seasons have evolved, we've seen uh, you become one of the main teenagers and it become Parent Dale as well. So how have you guys seen the characters evolve and how much input have you had in the growth of the characters. I mean, I wouldn't even call it input. It's like a, it's a constant open dialogue with myself and the showrunner about where Cheryl's at, what her headspace is. Like, he now trusts that I know Cheryl better than anyone, which is a really beautiful place to be, and I believe it's not a place that you get to a lot on television shows, so I'm very lucky to have that, truly. But also, it's just like, he, he wants the ideas. Like, he wants the exciting and fun different things, and it's very cool to have such an open person who's your boss. And I think as far as the parents are concerned, we give the young cast or the young characters something to rail against, right? All the parents are completely mental outside of the, possibly Fred. So, you know, we did, we, I think it's uh, become a vital part of, of pushing the story and the confrontation and the adversity forward is by having these nutcase parents for, um, for the normal people in the show to have something to do. <laughs> I don't think I'd call Cheryl normal literally at all, but... True. For yourself, yourself. For, yeah, for me, what I signed on to do Riverdale, it was just very important that I wasn't playing here's your lunch, honey, have a good day. I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to do a show just to get a paycheck. I wanted to find something that I could really love. So when Roberto started talking about her con, her like husband in prison and Fred is the love of her life and she's run away from this whole life. And then it was like, okay, so there's going to be something to do. I wanted to make sure that there was something to do. Um, as the character, and then since then, Roberto has just evolved it into completely something different. Mm. Yep. Right over here on this side. Hi. Hi. So, is that Leo? Yes. Hey, you. Hi. Okay, so as you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of negative tropes in media regarding LGBT representation. 
So my question is, what's it like to play a lesbian character that many LGBT people look up to? Do you ever feel any pressure having to represent such a vulnerable community? And how do you prepare yourself for a role like that? Lots of questions in there. Sorry. Always appreciate you. Um, you know, I don't feel pressure. I feel a large responsibility to represent it properly and with respect. However, I think it's a really beautiful thing. We spoke about this a little bit at the table, how lucky I am to be able to bring that to light, how few roles there really are in, you know, and it's just kind of starting now in high school, struggling with your sexuality, especially as a woman. It's so rare to see in the media, and I feel so honored and blessed to be able to do that. I think it's, I mean, it creates connections like we have now, where, you know, you feel this, really beautiful responsibility to bring this character to light in the right way. Um, and to your second point, how to pre prepare for that. It's not even really preparing for her sexuality, it's just preparing for the way that she feels and the love that she has. And I don't really look at her sexuality as a huge defining character for her, which I don't really think it, sh it is for, you know, I think it's more just that she, that's who she loves. There's not really much to it than that. Um, and it, it hurts even more that her mom doesn't respect and yeah. love her through that so it's more it's more about that relationship for, for me developing with Cheryl because the sexuality is is just part of who she is so we don't have to really prepare that I don't think yeah, yeah. I think with the with Penelope not being supportive of um, her daughter's sexuality I think it's a good conversation starter I have a lot of people um, fans saying you know what is your problem and I go well personally, of course, I'm not, not, not the opposite of who I am, Natalie, but as Penelope, she quite po possibly is gay herself. I mean, maybe that's uh, that's where her uh, initial homophobia comes from. I mean, we all know a lot of people like that. They're so, they suppress their feelings so much or their true selves so much that they go the opposite direction and, and are incredibly um, uh, confrontational and unhappy, you know? Well, it's also such an important storyline because today I've been at my table for maybe two hours and I've had at least seven or eight people come up and say either their best friend has come out and their parents no longer accept them or they've come out and their parents no longer accept them. And to me, it's like that storyline is so real and, and really resonates with so many people. That is, of course, important to bring that to the media. And I am so happy that I'm on a show that does that, A, and B, that I get to do it. Thank you. All your questions were answered, Leo? You, I admire that you wrote them down and you read them. That is impressive. We're going to be watching out for you. Okay, right on this side here. Hi, so this question is all for all three of you. Um, obviously, you aren't from Vancouver and you're just here to film, but I was wondering where is your favorite place that you've been to in Vancouver or regularly go to? <laughs> so I can't you can blow up my too? spot like that, you guys. I can't blow it up. My apartment. That's honest. I'm being dead. I'm being dead true to you. I love. That's where I'm at. In the airport. Really. That's about it. It's a nice airport. I need to take you out. You do. I need to so take you out. Can I just go off for a yes, second? Yes, please. Okay, everybody. Welcome to now the segment where Marisol tells us everywhere we need to go for the next 14 weekends. Here's the thing. Okay. So here's the thing about Vancouver. Yes. There's a ton to do. Yes. Okay, I'm a mom, so I'm constantly looking for stuff to do with my daughter, who I'm sure she's out here somewhere, but I can't see her. So, Stanley Park is amazing. Um, I've done the carriage rides, and it's really, really cool, and when it's really nice out, it's just like, where am I? <laughs> like, I grew up in Chicago, nothing looks like this. It's just spectacular. Then, the Van Dusen Botanical Garden, like on Christmas, there's these amazing like electrical lights that you can walk through there, and I'm waiting for spring to hit so I can go back again, because again, it's like, where am I? It's incredible. Um, there's also on the top of Cypress Mountain on Christmas, they have like Santa and they have snowshoeing and they have all these electrical light things and hot chocolates. Um, so I'm, I'm, that, <laughs> I'm that girl. Oh, and I also love Granville Island and taking the little fairies um, back and forth to Grand just because it's fun. Okay. Wait, that's it? Well, there's a ton more, but I'm going to use up the whole panel and I don't okay. want to do that. We'll talk to you about that. Okay. okay. All right. We'll record that for one hour. Okay. All right, Natalie? <laughs> Well, as you know, I'm a fan of women's wrestling, so I like to go to Glam Slam, East Van. Um, I like to go to the Biltmore and uh, watch burlesque, because I'm also a huge supporter of burlesque. The friendliest places you can go, and good DJs afterwards. Fox Cabaret is fantastic if you'd like a dance. Um, and, oh yes, and I go up Seymour to snowboard with my son. It's such a different contrast of the kind of places you guys hang out. I just look for trouble. That's amazing. How am I the youngest one here, but the largest homebody? Girl, we need to get out. Oh. All right, uh, over here. Uh, 
Hi. Um, so my question is for all of you. Uh, is there any like relationships, like love or otherwise, you'd want to see developed more in the show? Ours. Oh yeah. We Honestly, though, that. like we haven't. We have in season three. We've barely even spoken to each other, and I find our relationship quite interesting. Yes, and I think the whole sexuality thing, there there needs to be a moment when I actually can accept who you are and bless you with your choices. That'll be the final scene in season It'll 10. Season, like 90 90 three. season 93. Season 93, <laughs> she finally accepts Cheryl for who she really is. Yeah, when I'm on my Zimmer frame, like, oh, oh, right. <laughs> but I, my hope is that Shoney stays together forever. Are you guys Shoney fans? Do we like Shoney? <laughs> Let's just keep them together. Let's keep them happy. I love them. They make me so happy. Vanessa, we miss you. <laughs> um, I miss Hermione. I miss Fred and Hermione's relationship. I don't think we'll ever be able to go back there because she completely like stamped all over it. But it was really nice when it lasted. I miss that. Yeah, it was like when it was a different show. When it yeah. was like 90210. Innocent. And then the show just got crazy. Right. So <laughs> before she was a mafia boss. Season one was innocent. My brother was murdered. Dude. True. <laughs> but <laughs> now. That would be a sad Yeah, but how many people are we murdering this season? And everyone is Every a murderer. Week, there's new people dead. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's part of it. Everyone has, somebody has to die all the time. But yeah, other than, you're right. Other than your brother dying, it, that was a nice sweet time in season one. You had something. Remember that my, have you guys, actually, you know, I was going to spoil season one, but some of you may not have finished it, so never mind. But if you guys know who killed my brother, remember that part. Not so innocent. Sir. And, okay, the end of season one is when it got really dark. But the beginning, well, actually, no, no, you're right, you're right. I would just take that back. and everything. I take it back, I take it back. <laughs> I love it wrong. Okay, oh, over here, what's your question? Um, so this is for all three of you. Are there any characteristics of your character that you don't like in the show? Oh. I love all of me. <laughs> you know, that's a great question. Um, in the, have you, I don't know if all of you guys have the most recent episode, but Cheryl beats up some people on the show. I don't like the bully side of Cheryl. I think the mean facade is interesting and creates another layer for her. I like playing that, but when she straight up bullies, I really, really don't like that because she's come so far. I feel like, you know, season one, that was really her. By season three, I feel like she's developed so much that maybe it doesn't make sense as much anymore. So that's something that I don't necessarily enjoy. Uh, for me, I really don't enjoy Hermione cowing to Hiram. It's really hard for me to play that. It's also hard because I'll hear the fans going, when are you gonna stand up for yourself? When are you gonna do this? And as a, as a woman, especially in this day and age, it's really hard to kind of play Hermione sitting back and being scared of Hiram and all of those things. And so I, I, every time she gets a chance to step out and take him out, I'm very happy for that and I want more on that. Thank you so much. Sure. Hi Natalie and Marisol, I met you two days ago, but um, my question is, what was the, like for all of you, what was the most awkward scene to film? Most awkward scene to film? Oh, I remember my most awkward scene was um, when I was kissing Santa. Oh my god, that was awkward for me too, just to watch, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yep, agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have an awkward scene. I've had a scene, I think the hardest scene, which might have been awkward because it was just hard, was the first scene of the second season where Hermione tells Veronica I should slap you for what you said, but I'm not a violent person. It was such a 360 degree difference between what Hermione was like before and then that for me it was just a hard transition to make and have justified as the same person. So that. Um, this is for all of you. Uh, what is your least favorite scene to film and what are the relationships you have with the actors on set? I don't have any least favorite scenes. I love them all in their own individual way. Even, even when you're being an extra? For like 12 hours? I'll take it. Look at really? the paycheck. Ah. Don't love Cheryl, so all good. Um, and the relationships with each individual person on the show, if they're all so unique and different. I mean, truly, I can say confidently that we are all a family. Like, no matter where the show goes or where I am in the world, I know that if any of us are in the same city, we will always spend time together. And I think that is one of the more beautiful things the show has done is like 
created a separate family for me. So I love them all. I mean, truly. Like, I know a lot of cats say that, but I truly mean it. Yeah, I mean, on other projects, it tends to be, I always say, there's always one banana. <laughs> You know, you just go, who's oh, the banana? It's so much fun until the banana. We're just a lot of bananas then. No, I, I, I can't, I've got a lot of, so many bananas to slip on. No, Riverdale, yeah, I, I think it's a really interesting, huge cast. Uh, a lot of really fun people, um, and uh, yeah, I, there are there are no uh, awkward scenes. I'm um, also I think the waiting is the awkward part. You know, when you're like, what do I get to do next? It's all fun to play. Marisol, you're taking the relationships. It was stuff. You know, normally when I did shows, we didn't have social media like this. Even 24, which was huge, there was nothing. So you never knew. You're just like, oh, I don't know. I hope people like it. Great, <laughs> you like? Like you have no idea. And with this, it's that immediate interaction. Yeah. Right over here. Hi. Um, this is for all of you. Um, what's your favorite season of the show? One. 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 Why? What about you? I would say three. Interesting. Three. Okay. Why? Well, it's because there's a new killer, the Gargoyle King, and it's like a mystery to find out who's who. And it's way back in the like beginning when you guys were kids in the Midnight Club. I mean, I think I think people do really enjoy the fact that they, we just tear through so much story in every episode. So you you, you have a lot to chew on uh, if you if you're waiting a week for your next episode. And I think that's kind of that's part of our formula, our winning formula. Yeah, there's something for everyone. I feel like on our show, but also I think season one, speaking for myself, it's just I feel like season one was a lot about the relationships. Like I yeah. feel like it was really based on the friendships and the relationships. Of course. Tony wasn't in season one, so obviously, if we added her in, it would actually be my favorite season. But um, I, I feel like it was so much more. more time. If we had a lot more time. It was less really? saturated with story. There were moments, and it was just a one through line. Yeah, more cinematic. Yep. Yeah. Oh, on this side. Hello. This question is for Madeline. Uh, do you enjoy archery? I love archery. It makes you feel like such a bad blank. <laughs> <laughs> bad in a good way. Right over here on this side. Hi, um, this is, I have two questions for all of you, um, sorry, um, what is, like, the character in the show that you relate to most personally for yourself? And, um, oh no, I forget, <laughs> um, there's a lot of stigma around, like, the show itself, and a lot of people say that it's, like, overdramatic and that the writing isn't all that good. And like, are there times where you like you. look at your script? Um, that's a really, that's a really awkward question to ask people. Um, okay, well, let's just talk about the first one. I'm gonna. I love the writing on the show, and I love my show, so I'm not gonna talk about that. What was your first question again? Um, like, what is a character that you relate to the most personally? I think all the characters are literally insane. So I would say <laughs> none of them. What do you guys think? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I would probably relate most to one of the males on the show. Like, maybe I'm a bit of a, I don't know, Martin Clemens, the sheriff. <laughs> How's that? Because I don't know. I just want. I, that's how. Health. That's how. Yeah. That's how I think of myself. Like, that's the size of my biceps. Why don't we all pick one for each, for everybody else? Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're closest to Fred in real life. Oh, in real life? In real life, I think you're closest to Fred. Oh, okay. Uh, and you are too sane to be close to any of the people on the show. <laughs> I love you. You're a little insane, but you are too normal and sane and, and nice to be like, I love you. Thank you. And you... You... Uh, can't wait, tell me. <laughs> Maybe a little uh, Charles Melton. That's Reggie. <laughs> Reggie, that's, yes. that's what, if I mean airhead? Like I don't, I'm like, I'm confused. No, I, I'm just distracted by the lips and the cheekbones. Sorry. Well, he does have really good lips and cheekbones, you're right, you're right. You're right. I'm just talking about you. I'm assuming, are you talking about her? No, I'm talking about the Oh my god, he's got way better lips and cheekbones than me. Lips and cheekbones. <laughs> okay. Um, I say, I, for you, I would say Betty. Because oh. Betty, her character is thrown into this this thing where all these things are happening to her constantly, mm -hmm. especially in this next episode. Um, and with you, this is sort of like what, your second thing? This is my first big thing. Your first big thing, yeah. And you've blown up 
and all of these things are sort of thrust at you and you're handling them so well. So I would say better. You know, I, on second thought, Tony, you could probably jump into Tony's skin. Yeah. 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 I'll take it. Right over here on this side, please. Thank you. Uh, also, does, I have a question for all of you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> what's your favorite video game? Video game. Video game. Oh, my boyfriend plays um. What's that one he's playing? Apex Predator? He likes that, so I guess that one. I don't, oh, oh, no, actually, I love Harry Potter, Hogwarts, and Mystery. I played that on my phone. Don't tell anybody else, though. <laughs> I like Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm like Scrabble and Blackjack Girl. <laughs> classic! Oh, yay! So you're the classics. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Right here on this side. Um, so, as you mentioned, all your characters have had some questionable moments, or the moms are plain evil by now, but what is one characteristic that you like about your character that you think might be able to redeem them eventually? I think Cheryl is coming to a place where she is unapologetically herself, and I have a lot of respect for that. I think there are still times when she puts that facade up, of course, but I think she's learning that being yourself is the best way you can be, and that's something that I really admire about her. I would say that Penelope is starting to look at her childhood and why she ended up so bitter and twisted, and if she could actually face that and forgive uh, the people who turned her life into something odd when she was seven, seven years old, she might be able to forgive everybody and just enjoy herself rather than always looking for revenge. Uh, for me, I'm fine with Hermione doing horrific things, as long as it's to protect Veronica. Um, that's fine with me. If it's to hurt Veronica, then I, then I just don't understand it. But if it's to protect Veronica, I'm fine with her going to whatever limits she has to go to. And I like seeing that fight and that warrior within her. I just want it to be for the right reasons. Yep. Right here on this side. Hi. I feel like Tony and Cheryl have been drifting apart. Do you think they're going to stay together or like split up? You're just going to have to watch the show. <laughs> uh oh. I'm not leaning either way. You will find out. Stay tuned. What are we here on this side? I have a question about the conspiracies surrounding the show because I was watching the Shane Dawson video that Madeline was in. It's, um, I had a question if like about conspiracy theories that you like when you saw them were crazy like fake and it's like how could someone come up with this type of conspiracy can we just take a moment to talk about how cool shane dawson is by the way like thank you like, the most talented person i've ever met you probably yeah no clue i'll show you later the coolest person i've ever met in my entire life this is going to be something like a shane dawson panel now um you know i actually don't remember that video at all but whatever i said in it i'm still going to stand behind so, cheers for that. <laughs> right here on the side, please. Hello, my name is Ikitara. I just want to say Brazil loves you so much. We love Brazil. Brazil is so loving. <laughs> Which scene was the most difficult to film? Uh, do you guys remember in season one at the very end when Cheryl's on top of the ice and then she falls, she kind of falls but also kind of tries to fall into the water? Yeah. That was physically difficult because I was in a, you guys know what a shipping container is? Those big, still, like, they tinge, they filled that with water. And I was in that for about 16 hours. So that was difficult physically um, and very interesting and challenging. Yeah, in a mini skirt. Yeah, being cold is yeah, definitely like, always a problem. In a, in a mini skirt and also learning how to use a respirator, which is like the underwater scuba diving gear, and there was only one hole to get air at the top, and once you're under and you're down, you kind of have to make it to their side, and they were pulling me with a rope, and I had wax up my nose, and woo! Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. It was the coldest, no director. The coldest in Vancouver that they've ever had, yeah. and I remember going, how is Madeline going to film this scene? And I'm still alive. Yeah, so well done. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. For 16 hours. I mean, I had a break. <laughs> no. <laughs> I had a sandwich. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was very pruny by the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't top that. Sorry, that is pretty awkward. Uh, we have. But you did a great. Thanks. We only have five minutes left, so I'm not going to be able to get to everybody's questions. But obviously, you can visit the ladies at their table here, but we're going to continue here. So, if you do have a question, just ask one, and uh, we want to be able to uh, try to get as many people as we can before we wrap up. Right here on the side, please. Who do you guys think makes you laugh most on set? Mark. Cool KJ or Camila? Or Lily? Or, or, or anybody but Mark? Everybody. <laughs> everybody on this show is funny, other than me. <laughs> Madeleine's pretty funny. Okay. Right, right here on the side. Hi, so I was wondering if, if there was any like tips or tricks that you guys learned to build your guys' characters in season one, like any video diaries to figure out how they stood or anything like that. I usually write a, I write a whole background where whenever you meet a character, I just write the entire backstory of what I think it was just so when I'm entering or seeing it for the first time, there's like a whole life before. And then what I'll also do is I'll watch other people that I think have similar qualities to the character that I'm playing. So for Hermione, I watched Robin Wright Penn in House of Cards, completely. And then I watched uh, Kate Blanchett in uh, Towns of Mr. Ripley. And so, and then as we started going into the more the mafia thing, I started watching Pacino and Godfather. So for to me, it's just also doing that and finding different traits that I can bring to the character. I was actually given a fantastic clip when I auditioned, which is a Hitchcock movie, a black and white movie, and it's called Rebecca. And they said, look at the character of Mrs. Danvers, who is this very high collared, her hair like in this sort of weird braid. Um, and she's like the old maid of the house. And um, she speaks with this very kind of smooth voice. And her whole mission during this film is to make the leading lady kill herself. So she, you know, she kind of encourages her to jump from the window. And, and they were like, if you could Sounds do that. Right. Um, and she's always a bit kind of gone with the fairies, you know, like this kind of, mm, yes, it would be so easy. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, they showed that and I went, I'll give it a bash. And, and that was my reference and I always, I always just go back to Mrs. Danvers. Mrs. Danvers didn't end up as a dominatrix of the bordello, but um, that's kind of, there's still that, that part of her uh, that is like oddball that I can go back to, it, or the voice, you know, you start with the voice as well, it can help. Madeleine, something for you? We can move on to the next question. Alright. What is your favorite character in Riverdale? <laughs> your voice is so cute, oh my goodness. I kind of wasn't paying attention to the question, it's so cute. Um, my favorite character in Riverdale is Cheryl and Tony. <laughs> is that a bad answer? I'm sorry, I love them. Me. Does that work? <laughs> very cute. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Are you reading a question? Okay. How's Luke? Uh, you know, we're actually well, so. Marisol, do you want to address this? We're not at liberty to talk about it, unfortunately. Yeah. Just because family's asked for us to keep his privacy. But thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Just keep putting out the positive vibes, okay? Do you think Cheryl will join the farm? Undetermined. Undetermined. The, the season's almost over, so I guess we're just going to have to keep watching. We don't always know what's going to happen to the characters until we get the script right before we're about to film it. And we're also sworn upon pain of death to not give out any secrets. So when we say you're going to have to wait and find out, it just means that we can't say anything. Um, but we love your question. Okay? You're welcome. Thank you. Right here on this side. Um, is there like any character that like you wish didn't die out of like all three seasons? My son. <laughs> My dad. Mm. Yeah, we had a rough Sorry, time. Sorry, spoiler alert. The, <laughs> the blossoms are going down your neck. I'm good. No. <laughs> <laughs> all died. How about right over here? Hi. Hi. I know this has probably been asked before, but I was wondering for all three of you, um, if you weren't an actor, what would you be? This is the only thing that I would be happy doing. So, I would be doing this. I write and I direct, um, so I would, I'm happy doing that and I would be doing that, but I've also always been an uh, environmental activist, so if I wasn't doing that, I would be fighting for animal rights, regardless. Rockstar? Yeah. Yeah. I have a great memory of you. 
at the rap party. And that's all I'm gonna say of her being a rock star. It was great. I love rock and roll. Yeah, baby. Uh oh, are you gonna close this off with a song for us, Marisol? Uh, yes. <laughs> right over here, please. Um, how do you feel about how far the storyline of Riverdale has drifted from the actual comics? Well, you know, I think the Archie comics, it's so beautiful that there are so many different universes within the Archie comics. I think they've done a really good job of just cre of always, it's ever changing. And I think our show is just another take on that. So I don't feel like we were necessarily meant to stay that true to the comics. I think from the beginning we were always different. And I like that. I think it keeps it fresh and interesting. I know a lot of Die Hard fans had difficulty with it at first, but I think we're just another take on it. The, the cool thing is that we have, um, what's his name, the Archie dude. He comes with us everywhere. Um, Goldwater? Yeah, Goldwater. Yeah. And he, um, you know, it's his father's legacy with these comic books. And then he took it over and then he started writing all the stories. And the fact that we have his blessing and he loves the characters and he loves what we've created, I think makes us feel very proud of what we have drifted off from as long as we have his blessing to go ahead and do that. If you could pick any other TV show for your character to cameo in, which show would it be? Chloe. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Where are these answers coming from, you guys? Which shows do you like? I mean, Marvelous Mrs. Basil is like my favorite show, yeah. but like, Cheryl yeah, would never be on that. that show. I don't know, I think she should stay in Riverdale forever. Um, out of all the characters, what's your favorite like wardrobe personally? Mine is. Mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna Sorry. say I love my wardrobe. Our answers are so bad. Well. We're like my own. <laughs> yeah. Our mine is style icon right over here. Hello, nice to meet you guys. Hi. This question is uh, for all three of you guys. What was the hardest film to see? Uh, hardest film. I addressed that earlier. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest one was the shipping container one. That's yeah, the one we're yeah. still reeling from. 16 yeah. hours. I'm traumatized and I wasn't even there. Uh, but, have another uh, question? Yeah, do, do you have another question? Madeline, by the way, I like your YouTube channel. Oh, thank okay. you so much. It's really entertaining. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to wrap this up really quickly, but I see that there's just the two of you, so uh, I'm going to let you guys ask your question. Yes, go ahead. Um, what's your uh, favorite uh, movie of the year? Bohemian Rhapsody. Woo! Yes, thank you. Bohemian Rhapsody. Black Klansman. Oh, so good. I loved Leave No Trace, which was not an Oscar contender, but uh, look out for it. Leave No Trace. Leave No Trace. All right, last question right there. When's the Heather's episode coming out? Mm -hmm. We just aired episode 13, right? So it'd be three more. It's episode 16. And how many episodes are there in this season? 22. 22. Oh, and you guys just got season four announced recently. Yeah. Woo! yeah, yeah. So congratulations. We're going to see you guys. And again, if you have some more questions for these ladies, they're going to be at their table. There's an opportunity Come to get autographed, a photo op, say hi, ask the questions you didn't get to ask. Uh, oh, thank you for letting us crash your panel. Thank yeah. you for joining me. Like I would have been party. so lonely. Thank you, ladies, and thank, thank you all. There's going to be another panel starting in just a few moments. And uh, enjoy the convention. Thanks, everybody. Woo!